One of the worst things that can happen to us as bass anglers is to get stuck in between. Well, you know me, I am constantly trying to think about how we can make ourselves better anglers and I decided to do a little experiment. So take a look right here. So I've got one of my favorite jigs tied on. I've got a tape measure laid out here and we're going to see how far that lure actually moves with a small movement of our hand. Now I'm gonna focus on moving my hand just 45 degrees, so not a full 90, okay, which we do sometimes do that, but just 45 degrees, that's all I'm gonna move it, and we're gonna see how far that lure actually comes down the length of this tape measure. So let's go ahead and move my hand, and then look at this, that jig moved five feet. Now let's think about how this applies to our fishing. How often do we see a crawdad move five foot? Boom, that fast, that far, not very often. And if they do, it's because they're on high alert and they're trying to escape. Now let's apply this to what we're actually doing when we are fishing. If you take a look here under the water, this jig right now looks super natural. It's just small movements. We could visualize as bass anglers a crawdad just, you know, moving a few inches at a time. This looks really good. Now take a look what I'm actually doing here. I'm not moving the rod at all. I'm just turning the reel handle ever so slightly. Just a little turn of the handle creates this type of action under the water. Well, what happens is we forget to visualize what is going on and we get in that in-between place. Let's take a look at this graph right here. So at the very far end of this chart that I made, we've got fishing very, very slowly. We know this works. We know that bass will come up and take a look at the lure and, you know, does it look natural? Can we get their natural instincts to eat that offering when it's just sitting there naturally? We know that works. We've done it all the time with finesse presentations. Now let's take a look at the other end of this chart. We've got very fast, we know this works, burning a square bill, ripping a jerk bait through the water, a lot of times using a soft jerk bait and skipping it across the surface like a fleeing bait fish type of emotion. All of those are at either end of this presentation spectrum, but we spend the majority of our time, it's probably safe to say at least 90% of our time, stuck right here in the middle. We're in between. This is probably the least effective place to be fishing. Now, if the bass are really aggressive, yeah, of course we're gonna get some bites right here, but how many bites are we missing by being stuck right here in the middle, not in this very natural end of the chart or this very reaction-based end of the chart. Now, you may be thinking, Steve, there is no way that I can fish that slow. Well, I, I've thought about that as well because I struggle with this myself. So there's two things that we can do to stay down here in this slower end of the spectrum or this more natural end of the spectrum. One, we can really spend some time with our lure in the shallows, in clearer water, in a swimming pool, baby pool, whatever it might be, and just watching it, seeing what we do up here with our hands and our wrist and our arms and the rod and the reel, how does that affect what's going on to that lure under the water in more than just five seconds here and 10 seconds here, but really study it, analyze it. What does a hop look like? What does a drag look like? What about the different plastic trailers we might put on a jig? What about the different soft plastics we're going to use on a Texas rig? Really spend some time with that and the better we know how that lure is gonna behave based on the action we impart on it, the more likely we are to be fishing that lure at the right speed or at the right place as far as this chart in that slow zone or really up in that fast end of the thing. So that's the first thing that we can do. The second thing that we can do, and this really, really goes to those anglers that just have a hard time fishing that slow, is to make more presentations, but the presentation isn't as long. So I rather make 50 casts 
and each presentation is shorter as far as how much territory I'm covering, but I know that that presentation is 100% natural looking. I'd rather do that than do 15 or 20 presentations that are bringing that lure in that in-between place. And I know that my odds of a bite are just not that good unless the bass are super hyper aggressive. So make more presentations, but the actual presentation itself can be shorter in length, shorter in time. And this really goes back to using search baits to find where some bass are located and then really slow down and pick an area apart. Now, another big aspect about being successful is understanding what our lures are actually doing under the water. It might surprise you. So if you wanna watch a video on that, go ahead and check this one out right here and make sure to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.